Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the final part of our series on the DMP model. In this video, we're going to go through some comparative statics uh, just from a graphical perspective, and we're going to relate those comparative statics to our equations uh, in the DMP model. Let's go. So with every comparative statics story, we start off with a initial equilibrium, right? Let's just go and denote it. Uh, here and make things really, really, really clear. So we have an equilibrium uh, labor market tightness and equilibrium wage, right? Which we first start out with and equilibrium uh, employed and unemployed. Now, when we see an increase in the value of our output through say technological innovation or some other uh, sort of factor that goes in increases this Y, um, we look at both these equations and we're going to see that the shock is going to carry out our job creation condition. And it helps if you think about these algebraically, right? And just moving uh, these intercepts here. Um, we'll also see uh, a shift inward from our wage determination equation because we're moving up along this line here, right? I know this isn't, you know, the, the straightest sort of line that we have here, right? Let's go put a one here just to denote that we're moving a little bit, put a little zero here. And what will happen though, is that we're going to end up still at a higher uh, labor market tightness and a higher wage here. And the reason why this wage determination equation uh, does not necessarily dominate or just match our job creation condition is because we have this beta term on our wage determination equation there. Now, we see that we've moved from theta naught to theta one and W naught to W one. And this story about uh, our labor market tightness it's going to be important for drawing out what happens on our left hand curve here. Now, what happens here is that we're going to see a shift outwards, right, of this curve, right, moving us along this line to a brand new uh, labor market tightness, right, which comes with it its own unique uh, equilibrium value of or equilibrium level of unemployed and equilibrium level of vacancies with it. So we see this movement inwards and this movement upwards uh, for both unemployed, right, or measure of unemployed workers and vacancies. Consider now the story where we see a increase in our unemployed benefits uh, B here, right? I'm just setting this up here real quick. And what ends up happening is that we need to know where exactly do unemployed benefits go and enter. So we don't see them directly, but we go and we see it through our unemployed Bellman uh, that we have here. Now remember, our unemployed Bellman is equal to B plus theta Q theta times W minus U, right? Meaning our worker picks up a unemployed benefit, right? In his state. And he has a expected value, which is denoted by their probability of finding a job and picking up the value of W and giving up U here. And when we see an increase in B, right? We are going to see a upward shift in our wage determination equation. So moving that up here, right? This is going to be WD1. And that's going to bring us to a theta one here and W1 here. So we're gonna see a inward shift there and a upward shift. Now, what that means for us is that this is going to go against smaller. And recall 
that our labor market tightness is defined by the number of vacancies over the number of unemployed. And when this goes and falls, um, that can only happen uh, when we have more unemployed compared to vacancies. And that's just simply because it's much more worthwhile uh, to go and sit around. So we're gonna see this inward, this inward shift, right? Um, to theta one star, right? And end up at this new equilibrium here. So these are the two uh, different types of comparative statics uh, that we can go and look at. Um, we can s consider, you know, other sort of uh, policy variables like that being the cost of posting a vacancy. How does that go and look and, you know, our, I guess, exogenous job destruction rate and our rate of return on the market. But um, for the most part, uh, at least in, in the scope of you know, this model, we're not really in direct control of these things here just yet, unless we go and start talking about planners problems, which I hope to do uh, in another video. So this is our whole series on the basic DMP model. I hope this video helped. Uh, take care.